Human life entails a lot of loss. It seems like the longer you live, the more you lose. The people you know and love, your own body begins to deteriorate. Institutions that you thought were solid and reliable turn out to be corrupt and very unstable. There's a lot of reason for grief. And so it's good to reflect on what the Buddha taught about grief. There was a time when King Vasenadi came to speak with the Buddha. And it so happened that his favorite queen died. So one of his courtiers came and whispered in his ear. He broke down and cried. And the first thing the Buddha reminded him of was the universality of loss. One was that he said, the things that are born do not grow ill, do not age, do not die. It's all around us. And he says the wise person thinks about the fact that it's all around us. And it's stirred to action. First, though, you give expression to your grief. The Buddha doesn't have you bottle it up or pretend that it's not there. He said, whatever extent you feel that something is accomplished by eulogies, making merit for the dead, you do your best to express your grief in a skillful way. But then you start reflecting again on the universality of it all. And you can give rise to different emotions. One is compassion. Think of all the people out there who are suffering. And it just goes on and on and on. And thinking about the endlessness of this, that gives rise to a different emotion, terror, sangwega. Sometimes it's translated as a sense of urgency, but it's, it's deeper than that, it's scarier than that. You think about life, the things you've accomplished, the things you enjoyed in the past. Where are they now? You're lucky if they're memories, and the memories slip away. They get confused. Some people go through life trying to gather up memories from different pleasures thinking they'll have something to hold on to. Like that old song, Preserve Your Memories, There's a, they're all that's left you. Well, it's not much to have left as you start forgetting them, confusing them. You ask yourself, this is what I'm living for? Memories? It's so ephemeral. It's so fleeting. And you really think about that, it does give rise to a sense of terror. Think of that conversation that Venerable Ratabala had with King Garavya. About aging, illness, death. When he was young, he was strong, but now he can can't even control his foot. He means to put his foot one place and it goes someplace else. And even though he's king, when he's ill, he can't ask his courtiers to share out the pain of his illness, so he feels less. He has to feel it all alone. And no matter how much he amasses in terms of wealth, he can't take it with him. And yet he's still a slave to craving. Tell him that there's a kingdom that he could conquer, and he'll conquer it, even if it's not on the other side of the ocean. That's where the terror comes in. Even though we 
suffer from aging, illness, and death, and separation over and over and over again. We keep coming back, coming back. Which is why we're fortunate that we found a path that leads away from that. Because this reflection of Sangwega is not meant to stop there. If you stop there, you get depressed. But it's meant to be coupled with pasada, a sense of confidence there's a way out. And so as you reflect on loss and the sense of grief that comes with loss, when you do it properly, it should motivate you to be even more diligent in the path, more devoted to the path. Because this offers something that's not going to slip through your fingers. Now when you get started on the path, it thinking about the goal, it often seems really far away. There's that dialogue between a deva and a monk. The monk was a non-returner. He's bathing one day, and the deva is attracted to him. He comes down and invites him to this robe. And in part of the dialogue, the deva says, why are you giving up what's immediately available for something that's unsure? And the monk said, I actually gave up something that was unsure for something that's immediately available. In other words, the pleasures of the senses are unsure. Whereas nirvana, when you find it, realize it's right there, right here. And it's not going to change. It's outside of space and time. It's the most certain thing there is. As long as you haven't found it yet, you still have to go on sangwega and basada to motivate you. Sangwega, that sense of terror, of just can be coming back for things that are going to slip through your fingers like water again and again and again, and creating a lot of suffering in the meantime. Or you could try the path. Other people have followed the path and they've reported that it leads to more than you could expect. The fact that it does take you outside of space and time means it's not going to be touched by anything. But it is available. It's going to be found in the present moment, or next to the present moment, you might say. And it's the end of all craving, not because you try to stop the craving, but because it's perfectly satisfying. So reflection on loss, when it's done properly, becomes a motivation to the practice. Because you look at the alternative, just more loss, and you come back again for more loss again. like King Garavia. You come back and you have to fight for whatever you're going to get, and then it goes away. You have to ask yourself, is that what you want? And if the answer is no, well, here's your breath, and here's the next breath. Make the most of them.